What's up all my horror fanatics out there? Welcome back to Late Night Frights. I'm your horror host for this evening, the Jay Sloan or Jordan, back here doing another video for you. And today is a horror battle. As you know, this week is our off week, so everybody's been battling two horror films. And the two horror films I decided to battle today um, was the original 1980 classic Stanley Kubrick film starring Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Scatman Crothers, and Danny Lloyd, The Shining. And the 1997 miniseries, The Shining from Stephen King, starring Rebecca De Mornay, Stephen Weber, uh, Melvin Van Peebles, Will Horniff, and yeah. Um, so, you guys know the drill. Also, I'm sporting my uh, Shining shirt I got from Fright Rags. The first horror shirt I ever, I ever bought, actually. Okay, so I'm going to try to review these as quickly as possible. I have a lot to say, so sit tight and uh, let's get into it, guys. So first, we have the 1980 The Shining which is a classic film, one of, the, uh, one of the, the best horror films of all time, in my opinion. Um, although it doesn't follow the book as closely as some people would like, I'll dive into that in a second. So, this film was directed by um, Stanley Kubrick, starring, like I said, Jack Nicholson, Shelley Duvall, Danny Lloyd, and Scatman Crothers. Basically, about a guy named Jack Torrance, who is a recovering drunk, who uh, wants to get a job as a caretaker at the Overlook Hotel through the complete winter season um, and, uh, yeah, that's what he wants to do, and when he goes, uh, he just goes mad and goes crazy and eventually wants to kill his family. Now, that is established. That's not, that's not a spoiler. If you haven't seen this, I'm sorry, but come on, you should have seen this before now. Um, so Jack Nicholson plays the part as Jack Torrance, um, and let me explain why Stephen King did not like this movie and why Stanley Kubrick and Stephen King kind of had a fight, and that's why this film, this miniseries, is made. Uh... Stephen King wanted to uh, to cast the film, and Jack Nicholson came in for the read, and he did not like Jack, Nicholson perform Jack Nicholson's performance. He said he was too over the top for the row, and he did not play Jack Torrance well. Um, and which, you know, to be honest, reading the, the novel, the book, I can see why, and I can somewhat agree. Um, from the time Jack Nicholson's presence is on screen... You can tell there's something wrong with him before he before he even takes his family to the Overlook. Uh, you can tell there's just something wrong with him. You can tell he hates his family, like he's a dick to his family. But I can respect, you know, Stanley Kubrick wanting to have Jack Nicholson in there because I think Jack Nicholson makes the film. No, this, uh, you know, this obviously both of these films. Uh, this one is more loose than this one. This one's almost a complete adaptation of the book. Um, but both of these films are based on The Shining, uh, you know, the 19, I believe, 75 or 77, which I could be wrong on both those dates. But uh, Stanley Kubrick wanted to go his own way, and I, I respect that because he is a director. Stephen King is not. So Stephen King does not know what's going to transfer from book to film. Stanley Kubrick does. Um, uh, but, you know, like I gave you the basic synopsis, the synopsis of it. Now I'm going to talk about characters a bit with this. Um, you know... Shelley Duvall playing Wendy Torrance. I've grown to like. Um, I didn't really have a problem with her when I was younger, but getting older, getting more and more into film like I am now, she's just a whiny little bitch at points, and I'm sorry for saying that, but she is. And uh, most of that, you know, watching the documentary, sorry about my hair, guys, I just got a shower or two. Uh, if you watch the documentary, most of that is due to the fact that Stanley Kubrick was such a dick to her. Like, he was tortured her basically didn't really torture her but tormented her and terrorized her she was so scared of stanley kubrick she wasn't afraid of jack nicholson's character jack torrance that presence on screen where you see her where she's scared that's because of stanley kubrick because he was such a dick to her which i don't understand why i've heard that he was really hard to work with i heard he was a dickhead director he's made some fantastic films so you know the shining a clockwork orange eyes wide shut which is my personal favorite his last film in fact uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, Full Metal Jacket. I mean, how can you leave that shit out? Um, but every film, you know, the thing about Stanley Kubrick is he likes to make the film his own. Uh, you know, speaking of A Clockwork Orange, he left out the entire last chapter of the book in that film um, because he's just, he's that type of director where it's it's my film, I'll do whatever I want to do. And he, his films are so unique. Um, this film is unique. It's got a lot of hidden messages, a lot of underlying messages where you have to really watch it to interpret to interpret the film, um, but that is the basic synopsis. Um, Danny Torrance was played by Danny Lloyd, which uh, has a gift called The Shining, and I'm only going to explain this once. The Shining is where he can see the future, basically, and he can, he can also talk to people through his mind, uh, talk to uh, other shiners, basically, I guess if you want to call them, 
um, without even opening his mouth. Um, he can see the future and uh, you know upcoming events, and actually stop some of those events as well. Um, but that is not dwelled upon too much in this movie, which I did not like, um, and that's one of the only things I didn't like. Um, although Jack Nicholson was over the top, I feel that he played it perfect for Stanley Kubrick's version. And I think if Stanley Kubrick would have uh, did Stephen King's whole idea and you know went page by page or whatever you want to say. Um, that it would not have been as good and it would not be as classic as it is today. Now, that is my true words. I think that he, him him pretty much, uh, you know, giving Stephen King the boot uh, and doing it himself, hiring a new screenwriter, screenplay, or person to write the screenplay for it, uh, I think it was a good decision, although I don't agree with it. I don't agree that he fucked Stephen King out of, out of being, uh, you know, involved with this movie, but this is a classic movie. Uh, and, and one of the best horror films of all time. And the novel was amazing, too. If you haven't read it, try to read that. Don't watch the movie and read the novel. Please, don't do that, because then you're going to get, like, mind-fucked mind to where you're like, what's going on? Because there is so much stuff that Stanley Kubrick did not add from the novel to the film, which I can respect, but it would have been nice to see, you know, a more worthy interpretation, but still one of my favorite horror films of all time, and I absolutely love The Shining. So, yeah... Okay, moving on to the 1997 Stephen King's The Shining, uh, which I said uh, stars Rebecca De Mornay as Wendy Torrance, Stephen Weber as Jack Torrance, Melvin Van Peebles. I don't know if he played Danny Torrance or not. I'm not really sure. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, let's go ahead and uh, review this. Now, this movie I watched recently. I got it in an FYE haul. If you if you watch my channel, you will uh, see that. I wasn't expecting much, but wow, was I impressed. I really did enjoy this movie. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Uh, I thought it was fantastic. It was almost five hours long, and it was almost page by page like The Shining, um, the original, you know, the novel of the film. Um, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and talk about the story first. You know, basically, uh, it's, well, it's ten times different than this. Um, it's got, you know, some of the same plot lines, plot points, basically about Jack Torrance and you know the thing that I love about this movie is in the novel it, it tells about how Jack is a drunk and how he abused his son and this one it doesn't really go into that although it ha there may be one or two lines in the whole film where uh, it is, even talks about Jack being a drunk and abusing his son and this one it's a full chat like almost a full chapter um, which I absolutely loved um, how it you know how he's a recovering drunk and He's trying to be a caretaker at the Overlook Hotel. And Stephen Weber, I believe, plays the part of Jack Torrance for, for Stephen King, for this movie specifically, not for this movie. But I think he plays it, you know, right out of the book. I really do. I think it was done really, really well. Um, you know, how he is a loving father, uh, That's you know, that's how Jack Nicholson did not play it, as a loving father who loved his family. He played it as a loving father, loved his family, just a drunk who makes bad decisions sometimes. But then... Um, towards the end, you know, that's what drives him is the alcohol. They try to, you know, the, the Overlook Hotel tries to get him to start drinking again. But, uh, yeah, and, uh, he, I think he plays it wonderfully. I really do. Um, and let's see what else. Re Rebecca DeMornay's character is Wendy Torrance. Uh, she did a really good job. Like I said, Shelley Duvall, I really can't blame her as much as, uh, you know, Stanley Kubrick terrorized her in the original film. But I think Rebecca De Mornay played uh, Wendy ten times better. In the novel, Wendy was a strong-willed woman uh, like she was in this film as well. Um, and let's see, we'll talk about Danny Torrance now. The kid who played Danny Torrance, a lot of people seem to have a problem with. I actually really enjoyed his performance. Uh, you know, in the novel, it touches on Danny having The Shining a lot more than it does uh, in the 1980 film. Uh, and this one, it touches completely on that, which I really enjoyed. You know how Danny, in a way, is 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 more of the the main character than Jack Torrance is, um, because he has the shining, and the hotel does want him, um, and it's trying to trick Jack Torrance, and that's what I really enjoy seeing. Um, like I said, almost page for page, or, or scene for scene, like the book, which I really enjoyed. Um, the whole performance all around, I think, was done well. Although, although it was made for TV, it was a mini series. Uh, I really, fu I fucking enjoyed this movie, man. I can't. It's not on the same level as The Shining, in my opinion, because I love this movie so much. But if you're wanting a worthy adaptation, and, and you know this hurts me to say it, but if you're wanting a film that is going to 
remind you exactly of the book, then you're going to watch this one over this one um, if you want an exact adaptation because this one strays so far, but this is, in my opinion, better than this one, um, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, <laughs> I said earlier that Stanley Kubrick knows what would transfer from book to film. That's one thing that really leads me to my next point. Stephen King isn't a director. Some things in this movie transfer so well and are so creepy and done right, but some things that he tries to transfer, because he wants it done page by page, um, some things he tries to transfer just don't doesn't work. It just doesn't work, guys. Um, especially like the scene with the uh, you know the hedges that come into life that just you can tell it looks so fake and they're not scary. They're actually cute looking, and you're like, okay, that just doesn't transfer. Um, and then. Uh, there's a scene in the in the original Shining and in the book um, where um, you know Danny gets abused by the uh, girl in Two Seventeen and uh, well the the nasty fucking rotting lady in Two Seventeen uh, and this one Jack Torrance has to go up and inspect and you know kind of detect and see what's going on well he goes in room two seventeen actually in the original Shining it's two thirty seven and this one it's two seventeen um, he goes up in the shot in the in the room. And this one, uh, not to give any spoilers away, but it's so bad. Like it, in this one, if you've seen it, uh, in the original Shining, he goes in the room and sees the lady, and she looks all hot. You know, she's really nice looking. He starts making out with her, and he turns his head back, and she's all rotted and nasty and got just ooh. Um, and he runs out of the room, which is pretty cool. I like this version over this version when it comes to that scene, because in this version... It just doesn't work. I'm not going to spoil it, but it just doesn't work. Um, but, uh, yeah, I really enjoy this. You guys can probably say, oh, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I thought it was fantastic. But this is a masterpiece, in my opinion. But, anyways, we're going to get to the battle now. I've talked to you guys. I've talked to you guys' ears off for uh, 12 minutes now. So, let's uh, get to the battle. So, without further ado, um, let me go to my notes. Sorry, guys, taking me a little bit. Okay, round one body count. Since since uh, there's no body count, or hardly any body count in these two films because that's not what they're based upon, I'm going to name round one um, better, um, hmm, more true adaptation of the book. Um, and that I'm just going to do that specifically for this, this battle. Uh, more true adaptation of the book. I'm going to have to go to uh, the 1997, The Shining. It, it just is way more uh, true to the book than this is. Um, but we'll get to this in a little bit. But the 1997 version of The Shining has one point. Story and originality. Um, well, I have to say, since this film was done first, I'm going to go with the 1980, The Shining. Plus, uh, I mean, I love the story in this one. But I had never read the book before I watched this. So I was more intrigued by this story. I thought it was a lot better, a lot well, more well done. Um, when I first saw this movie, and, uh, it, you know, this film will stick with me forever. This one, uh, I don't know if it will, that's sad to say, but this one will definitely stick with me forever. So round two goes to the 1980 classic. Um, let's see what round three has in store for us, guys. Round three, blood, guts, and gore. Um, neither of these films, uh, are bloody, uh, or gory, um, so I'm going to do a new, a new round. I'm going to have to mix that one up too. Sorry, these films are not that in that category. So I'm just going to have to do with what I got. You know, the best of what I got. So round three, we'd have to go to acting. Oh, God, that's hard to do. Because the acting was so good in this one. Um, it just, it really was. It was so good in this one. But it was phenomenal in this one. So I'm going to have to give uh, that round to the original 1980 Shining. So two, one. Uh, round four, um... Personal enjoyment and replayability this is the last round. Obviously, guys, the original 1980, The Shining, has to win. I seen this when I was younger, and it's you know it scarred me for life. It traumatized me when I was younger. Getting older, getting into horror films, I fucking love this movie. I, I, it's just an amazing movie. What can I say? Uh, no, it doesn't follow the book as closely as I would like it to, but it's still a fantastic film. And uh, what can I say? It's just a classic. Not saying this film is bad. This film is amazing. Check it out if you haven't seen it yet. But yeah, we're getting short on time here, guys. So I'm the Jay Sloan. Thanks for watching. You just watched Late Night Frights. Comment and subscribe. Until next time, guys, keep it horror. Peace.